In the Labour leadership and deputy leadership campaigns, lots of candidates have been dancing around the question of Jeremy Corbyn and his legacy, but not my next guest. The Shadow Justice Secretary, Richard Bergen, is a proud continuity Corbyn candidate. Are you Andrew. not? Good morning. Are you not? I certainly am, and I want to defend what I think are the three pillars of Corbynism, a democratic members-led party, uh, an anti-austerity pro-public ownership party, and an anti-war internationalist party, and that's what my three pledges as a deputy leadership candidate are based on. You've had two election defeats as a party, <coughs> the last one the worst since 1935. Have you learned anything? Yes, I think we need to learn the lessons, but we need to learn the right lessons. So what are they? I think it became a Brexit election. Brexit ended up overshadowing traditional party loyalties in many uh, parts of the country. We lost over 50 constituencies that had voted to leave in the 2016 EU referendum. Do you think if it hadn't been for Brexit you would have won this election? I think we could have won it if it hadn't been uh, for Brexit. What I do think is the case is it wasn't our socialist policies that caused us to lose a general election. So, so going forward, everything is absolutely spot on. It was completely right. Everything was good except for the Brexit problem. If you haven't had that, and so you're going to do the same thing all over again and hope it works third time round. No, I do think that the last election was a Brexit election. The next one won't be. I also think we need to learn the political, organisational and technological lessons of the defeat. Mm -hmm. And I also think that the right-wing press upped its game when it came to the demonisation of a decent man in Jeremy Corbyn. Because in 2017, we had a socialist leader, Jeremy, the Manifesto of Socialist Policies. 2019, lost. Say, and we came close to winning. We came mm -hmm. close to winning. It was an electoral advance. If only we'd have won. In 2019, same leader, a Lost manifesto again. of socialist policy, mm -hmm. and we got smashed. It was a devastating defeat. Mm -hmm. And what changed in those two years was the Brexit issue and also, I think, the right-wing press upping its game at demonising Jeremy. Now, there's been a poll of Labour members, uh, quite a good poll, which shows that if Keir Starmer wins this election, most Labour members think that he will move the party back towards the centre. What would be the future of the Labour Party if that happened? Well, I think that we need to ensure that we keep our socialist policies by ensuring we have a democratic members-led party. I'm supporting... So you'd be worried by that? Uh, I don't think there's a future of the Labour Party, politically, morally or electorally, by trying to triangulate our way back to power. Morally. We can't mm. drop our anti-austerity politics. We can't return to the days of the controls on immigration mugs, the days of supporting illegal wars, the days of Labour leaders mm. not supporting strikes, mm. uh, the days of only opposing Tory cuts and supporting austerity as long as it doesn't go too far too fast. We can't go back to the future. Um, after the 2017 defeat, you famously said that you thought that had been caused by the disloyalty of Labour MPs towards the leader. If you become deputy leader, and that has a, an oversight for discipline inside the party, would you kick out MPs who are disloyal to the leader? Well, first, I'd say, if it hadn't have been for the disloyalty and disgraceful behaviour by members of the Parliamentary Labour Party in 2016, we'd be three years into a Labour government now. Three years into scrapping tuition fees, three mm. years into people getting paid £10 an hour minimum wage, three years into building 100,000 council homes a year. So responsibility, I have to say, does rest with them in relation people, to unnecessary behaviour. People like Emily Thornberry, who have been part of this campaign, you get rid of them. Well, uh, Emily Thornberry played a very useful uh, role mm. uh, under Jeremy's leadership, and I was proud to have her as a colleague uh, in the Shadow Cabinet. But she was very, very different to Jeremy Corbyn's position on Brexit. Um, I'm, I'm just interested in what happens going forward if you are deputy leader. Um, you've got Keir Starmer perhaps as leader. You won't agree with everything that he says. Should you kick yourself out in those circumstances? Well, I'm a team player. Uh, I'm supporting Becky Long-Bailey to be leader of the Labour Party. I think it's about time we had a woman as leader of the Labour Party. And mm -hmm. I think she's best placed to safeguard the anti-austerity economics, push forward the green industrial revolution, which she uh, authored. Mm -hmm. But... Uh, whoever is elected as leader of the Labour Party, they won't have a mandate to ditch a single socialist policy from the last two manifestos without the express permission of Labour members. But whoever's elected Labour leader, I'd be laser focused on getting them into number 10 Downing Street. You'd be a loyal deputy to Keir Starmer, for instance. Of course. I'd be I'm loyal sure. to Keir Starmer, loyal to Lisa and Andy, loyal to Rebecca long -Bell. But I'd be loyal to the Labour Party members. I'll be a voice in the shadow cabinets okay. and hopefully in the cabinet for Labour members and trade unions. You've had some very distinctive policies of your own in this campaign, including 
twinning local Labour parties, CLPs, with towns and cities abroad where there have been, there's been trouble, places in Colombia. Can you just explain to me how that works? Well, I think we need to improve the political education in our party. It's important our party remains an anti-war internationalist party. That's the kind of party that Keir Hardy founded. And I think it could be the case that each year the annual conference could decide that we have an international justice issue and 100 CLPs, 100 constituency Labour parties, twin, for example, with villages in Colombia where people get shot for being a trade unionist, with communities in the occupied territories in Palestine, with uh, communities in occupied Kashmir, or, or so even in communities in other parts of the world. World, face, facing the consequences of climate change. So do you think that's the kind of policy, when you're thinking about all of those working class voters who deserted the Labour Party and went to the Conservative Party in this election, is that really the kind of policy which is going to win them back? Well, this is an internal Labour Party election. I think the deputy leader has a special role in relation to the democratic functions of the party. When it comes to the policies of the party to win back the votes we lost, I think it's essential that we remain an anti-austerity, pro-public ownership party, that we don't return to the triangulation uh, of the past and that we become a mass membership party. We should have a goal of a million Labour Party members. Of course, some of the things I'm talking about are about internal Labour Party matters. That's because the Maybe role of deputy relates specifically to right. that. Another thing you've talked about is the Tony Benn College of Political Education. Mm. Um, presumably this is going to be funded by the Labour Party. Um, again, can I ask you, does this include, for instance, Tony Benn's own views on the EU? Well, I think people would be interested to hear Tony Benn's views Bankers on the EU. Bankers' ramp, he called it. But to Tony Benn wrote about so much. He wrote about the uh, journey towards democracy in our country from the levellers, uh, the chartists, the suffragettes. He wrote about the anti-colonial struggles. He wrote an alternative mm. British constitution in a book called uh, Common Sense. So what this is about, the Tony Benn School of Political Education, we've got offering something which could empower Labour members. Not just books and writings by Tony Benn, but books by uh, Aniron mm. uh, Bevan, uh, books uh, about the struggle of the women against pit closures. So what about Tony Blair? Would he be welcome to come and talk at the college? He'd be welcome to come and learn at the college if he liked. He could come there as well. But and to lecture, more, to lecture, I know to that teach, he, I'm suggesting. I know that he, he did win elections for he you. He did. I know that Tony Blair uh, introduced tuition fees he could come and study for free at the Tony Benn School of Political Education. I was asking about whether he could teach rather than study, but never, never mind. Well, the students can interview him if they so wished. OK. We've got one last policy I want to ask you about, which is this idea of giving Labour members effectively a veto about Labour going to war as a government in the future. Why stop there? Why just stop? Why not have it for everything? Why well, not give the Labour members a, a veto on everything? I must say, with respect, that's a slight misrepresentation. Uh, the peace pledge is so that if there isn't United Nations uh, support, if it isn't a genuine national emergency, mm. Labour members would get to decide the party's position. Okay. If MPs still want to vote to bomb the country, uh, bomb another country, the candle but the political consequences. It happened in relation to Syria. Jeremy held a vote of Labour members and over 70% of Labour members voted against David Cameron's plan. All, the way, all, the, way sorry, all the way through Jeremy Corbyn's leadership, the party was harassed by the, uh, the problem of anti-Semitism. You spoke to the Jewish Labour movement and uh, you got 1% of the support at that meeting. Do you think it was because you had said things in the past such as Zionism is the enemy of peace? Well, I made a mistake. Uh, in saying that, this is a crude phrase, I said it before uh, as an MP, uh, I think it's important that we uh, all uh, get involved in the Labour Party in fulfilling our moral duty to fight anti-Semitism where it but occurs in the party or in wider society. But even now, that was in the past, even now you won't sign up to the Board of Deputies 10 point pledge to eradicate Zionism, why not? The, the reason that I won't uh, sign up to the Board of Deputies 10 pledge, I have three specific concerns about three specific pledges. Firstly... But everybody else can sign up to them. Uh, well, let, let, me expl let me explain if that's OK. Uh, firstly, I, don't, um, I feel uncomfortable as a non-Jewish person signing up to a pledge which refers to other Jewish groups as mm. fringe Jewish groups. For example, yeah. uh, Haredi Jewish groups, uh, what, what are they? Um, LGBT Jewish groups, a socialist Jewish group. I want to work with the Board of Deputies, with groups right across okay. the Jewish community to fight anti-Semitism, right. but also on a whole host of other issues. Richard Bergen, thanks very much Thank indeed you. for talking to us today.